The biggest problem in science today isn't our theories or models. It isn't our universities or institutions. It isn't our technology or the need for the next bigger particle collider. It isn't even the mainstream or dissidents. It is something much more insidious. Yet 99.9% .9 of us are guilty of this and no one talks about it. But I'm going to talk about it today and better still, I will tell you how I broke the habit of doing it myself. The biggest problem in science today has to do with time, not space-time or relativity, not time in the scientific sense, but in the human sense. The fact is we don't spend enough time looking at other people's work or what others have to say. We let others do the thinking for us, and that may be the most damaging aspect of science progress today. Let's face it, there is an immense amount of science going on in the world and an even larger amount of people blogging and vlogging about it on the internet. How can we possibly read or watch everything about everything scientific? It's impossible. Therefore, the easiest thing for us to do is to read an article or listen to someone on YouTube and trust that they took the time to investigate something that you don't have time to investigate yourself. Maybe it's a science evangelist you like who always uses inspiring words and has a smooth delivery. Maybe it is a columnist in a very reputable science magazine or newspaper that you have read for many years and trust. Or maybe it is a YouTuber who tries to put together interesting videos about science like me. No matter who it is, it is easier and takes less time to let others think for us when it comes to science. It is easier to let others take the time, read the book cover to cover, study the theory, understand the equations, or go through a science article and all its references. We are all very busy, and to understand science, it takes time. I'm not here to tell you that you should take time to learn in depth everything you are interested in. That is impossible in today's information overload. I am, however, telling you that it causes great problems in the scientific community and greatly stifles scientific progress. And both mainstream science and the dissident community are equally to blame. Let's look at a favorite subject of both dissidents and mainstreamers alike, relativity. I had the chance to meet and hear in person Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill has become a cheerleader for science, and during his talk at a local high school near my home, he pulled out his smartphone and held it up to the audience of mostly young high school students. He said to them that the GPS on this cell phone wouldn't function accurately if it wasn't for the theory of relativity, both special and general. I had to bite my tongue since I was not there as a private citizen. I actually looked away so I wouldn't say something I would regret. Some time ago, I did a video on this channel about Neil deGrasse Tyson's answer when asked if Einstein could ever be shown wrong. His answer? Laughing. Last one for you is from Hugh. Hugh wants to know, could I please ask Dr. Tyson when and if Einstein's theory of relativity will be fully discredited? <laughs> It will never be discredited because it works. Both of these incidents have everything to do with not taking the time to properly and fairly investigate the science being exposed. Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse Tyson trust 100% big physics and big cosmology. They themselves are mouthpieces for big science and never challenge what is being said. They explicitly state that it is their job not to judge, but to communicate. But what if Nye and Degrassi took the time to look at counter-arguments against relativity like all good critical thinkers should? If they did, they would certainly not be talking or laughing about relativity or teaching it in the same way. <laughs> yeah. 
If they would have taken the time, as many of us have, to review the works of Ron Hatch, Dr. Edward Dowdy, and Dr. Cynthia Whitney, they would see relativity failing in spectacular fashion. What if Bill Nye, who held up his cell phone, were to have studied the work of Ron Hatch? Ron is a world expert in GPS, in which he holds over 30 patents, and who says that GPS shows flaws in relativity rather than supporting it. Bill Nye, who preaches that GPS uses relativity, would have most likely kept his cell phone in his pocket. There's been a lot of information out there about space and time. What, what do you have to say about that? Well, I believe that they're completely disjoint. There's no mixing of space and time. The, yes, the bias of clocks has to be changed as a function of your speed, which is what I was talking about, and that's fundamentally what's in Lorentz's equation, Lorentz's mm -hmm. transformation. Uh, but, but that's an effect of clocks running at different rates physically. It's not uh, an exactly. intermixing of space yeah. and time. Yeah, that so makes I believe sense to me. time is completely disjoint from yeah. space. The theoreticians tell the world that GPS is a beautiful example of how relativity is used in everyday life. But it's not true. It is not used. At best, it's like a broken clock. It is right two times a day. Then why do they say it? because they tell you how it should work, not really how it works. Eventually, I do think that uh, the truth will out. Oh, it does sure. over the years, but, sure. Uh, sure. but it's it been a long time. time. Yeah. And when it becomes a matter of, uh, of, uh, of doctrine that one can't disagree with, it, it gets much more difficult yeah. to... Well, uh, but science you know, isn't that way. I mean, over centuries, it's changed, and things yeah. have been improved and disproved. Yeah. Right, right. So right. that's the way it's going it to be with this. But it can, so. it can literally take centuries. Oh, yeah. What if Neil deGrasse Tyson were to read Dr. Edward Dowdy's work on light and gravity? Dr. Dowdy is a retired NASA scientist who has evidence that light only bends in the coronas of suns, and outside the coronas, light doesn't bend as predicted by Einstein. Tyson instead scoffs at the very idea that Einstein could be wrong, and completely abandons the chance to not only learn himself, but to teach others to be critical thinkers. <laughs> it will never be discredited because it works. What is going wrong here with relativity? Simple. Science evangelists and mainstream science do not take the time to investigate both sides of relativity themselves. They don't address the question of being wrong other than to laugh at such a possibility. They are mouthpieces for big science and stay away from taking the time to investigate something as important as relativity and modern science. But if you think that big physics and big cosmology are the only ones to blame for not taking the time to truly understand concepts and all sides of a scientific topic, think again. Dissonants do the same. I know this next part is not going to be popular with many of today's etherists, but you watch this channel because I try to tell it like it is. So here goes. Ether, if you remember, is the theory that says light must be a wave in some type of medium, just like sound waves are waves in air. Many of today's modern etherists in the dissident community do not take the time to read ether's critics who are also in the dissident community. In the early 1990s and 2000s, most of the dissident community were against ether because of a few intractable problems like transverse waves and the immense elasticity needed in an ether theory. A majority of modern etherists choose not to take the time and understand these criticisms. They prefer to try to solve gravity with ether instead of addressing the major concerns. I have seen many people in the common area of this YouTube channel talk as if ether is the only model that can exist in order to give physicality to light that ether is inevitable, or that it is wrongly abandoned by scientists in the past. It is a given in their mind that ether is a fact. Yet, 
if they were to take the time to investigate, they would find that new particle models and lattice models can also describe light and perhaps without the problems pointed out by ether's detractors. I am not here to say that ether is wrong or that those working on it should stop their work. I am saying, however, that most dissidents in the ether community choose not to take the time to read arguments against ether, and that is no better than the mainstream science rejecting ether theories outright. Another problem in the dissident community is that dissidents often shun other dissidents who have more radical views of the universe. One such group that often gets shunned in the dissident community is the electric universe. Many dissidents frown upon the electric universe community for the belief that the universe is more electric than gravitational and that large planetary features like the Grand Canyon were caused by great catastrophic electrical discharges. To many dissidents and mainstreamers alike, this is too far away from a comfortable reality to even take the time to see what they are talking about. This attitude is wrong, but I'm going to tell you how to change it. I know how to change this attitude because I had to teach myself this same attitude. I had no one to help me. I had to learn it on my own. Ever since 2008, when I started helping the MPA, now the CMPS, I had to grapple with the fact that there were many competing theories out there and that our organization needed to support them all. Once I took the time to find that we are a model revolution, I can now teach you how to change your attitude so that you will not be caught up in the trap of not taking the time. The attitude you need to take when confronted by a new theory or a new criticism of an existing theory, Aristotle tells us, you must entertain a new thought without accepting it. That means you have to give every argument the chance to be correct. That is very hard at times. Take this recent book I received in the mail about the hollow earth. I can hear you now. Hollow earth? Right. I used to think the same thing. Now when I get a book, the crazier the title, the more excited I get. I see there is a chance for an incredible opening up of the mind. I never know within the pages of a book or in the logic of a failure of some current theory Therein lies the possibility for the very important aha moment waiting for me. Here's the book, Bubble Earth, Space-Time Gravity and the Evolving Earth. I, of course, immediately turned it over and found that I agreed with almost everything the author Nicholas Verne says on the back cover. And I quote, Discussions of space-time are usually centered on such things as multiple dimensions and black holes. Add a dash of philosophy and you might have a feeling not unlike that awaked by thoughts of the occult, saith Albert Einstein. However, space and time can and should be understood as being structurally simple. We need to believe that space is a primordial and eternal nothingness, and time emerges from the structure that has come to exist within it. The structure has a rate of change, and this rate of change becomes our definition of the rate of time. Time and gravity are symptoms of this entropic structure within space. But what does more damage? Not allowing a student to tackle an impossible or untrue statement, or not allowing them to discover something so important on their own? When in college while getting my math degree, I decided I would try to come up with an empirical equation for the circumference of an ellipse. This is one of the known impossible tasks in mathematics that can only be answered with an infinite series. But instead of discouraging me, my math professor let me try. And try I did. For three months, I tried everything I could in order to find a solution until I finally came to the conclusion that, yes, it was impossible. And the conclusion I came to allowed me to explain simply that there was a curvature on the ellipse that was not constant and could never result in an empirical equation as does a circle. In a circle, you have the same curvature around the entire circle, and therefore you can find a constant, which is pi, and an empirical equation. 
You cannot with the circumference of an ellipse. It requires an infinite series. When I started this channel and started leading our society, the CMPS, I made a conscious effort to look at any and all evidence with the eyes of a child. The eyes that give everything a chance to be true, no matter how absurd. To give a chance and voice to the person who spent copious amounts of their time trying to come up with some organization or explanation for the universe. I see the variety in science as a present and lifeblood of progress, not some crazy idea that could never be true. I guess I'm to science lovers what my math professor was to me, a cultivator of critical minds. Someone who sees that it is more important to cultivate critical minds than to judge whether those critical minds are right or wrong. The work of judging what is right or wrong is strictly the domain for historians. The work of supporting critical thinking should be the work of any vibrant science community. And the science community should stay away from judging others' truths. That only stifles science progress. Enough rambling. Now what I promised. How to change your attitude to that of a true critical thinker. Something I learned myself. We are going to look at three different scenarios using this comment. Expansion tectonics is better than plate tectonics by a mile. Number one, that's the first time I've heard about expansion tectonics. That sounds intriguing. I will have to check it out myself. Number two, I've read about what others have said about expansion tectonics. I will have to look more closely at the data myself to make a reasoned judgment. Number three, I have spent time checking out the data for expansion tectonics, and my opinion is... The trick is to honestly, and I mean honestly, identify where you stand on a subject. If you do that, your answer will not only be the correct one, but will allow you not only to advance your understanding of the universe, but will actually have a chance to help science progress.